Okay, so welcome to this video on illness scripts. This is the second video in our clinical reasoning uh, video series. So let's get started. So clinical reasoning, we talked about before, is the way that you're going to connect information that you get from a patient and the information that you've collected from books, so your book knowledge about diseases, and use that to come up with a diagnosis and treatment plan for your patient. And that book knowledge that you have about your patients, you're going to store that in something called an illness script. And that's what this video is about, to kind of go over what an illness script is. Uh, the illness script is built out of that book knowledge, but in reality, it includes a little bit more than that. It also includes all the patients that you've seen in the past that look like this. So let's say this is an illness script for appendicitis, then it'll include the book knowledge for appendicitis, but it's also going to include all the patients that I've seen that have appendicitis and all the... Th the little things that maybe weren't in the books, but now, you know, that, that helps build up the intuition I have for that, for what appendicitis looks like. As novices, you don't have that past experience, so you're just going to pretty much fill it up with your book knowledge about a disease. And so here's an example of what an illness script is, how it looks, how it's constructed, and you can see it has many components. It's got pathophysiology, epidemiology, time course, signs and symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. And so let's go through them quickly. Pathophysiology is... What makes the disease happen? How does it work? Like what's actually going wrong in the body? Uh, epidemiology is about who gets the disease. You know, how old are they? What risk factors do they have? Are they smokers? Do they travel? Do they have, do they, uh, have a particular dangerous job? You can see I put a question mark here by race. We used to always include race, but now we're finding, you know, race really doesn't play a role in most diseases. And so we usually don't include it with a few rare exceptions. Okay, time course really has two components. It's how long it's been going on, as long as, as well as how, you know, what the pattern of the disease is. So the onset and the pattern. So the onset could be starting suddenly over the course of hours, or it could be over months. And the pattern is usually going to be either constant or intermittent. Signs and symptoms, that's what you're going to find on your physical exam and your history. And so the questions that you ask the patients, what are the patients complaining about, as well as when you do an examination and you listen to their lungs and you listen to their heart, what are you finding in patients who have this disease? Diagnostics are the tests that you can order. What would you expect if you ordered a blood test or an x-ray in a patient with this disease? What would you expect to see? And treatment is how you, obviously how you would treat it. So let's look at one. So this is one that was constructed for migraines. And so you can see, again, we have our components here. And uh, so the pathophysiology, we're not really sure how it works. We think there's some genetic factors with, with, that are at play as well as uh, blood vessels in the brain that do something. Who gets the disease? It's uh, usually women get it more than men, and, and usually in the 30s. What's a time course? It starts over the course of hours uh, to days, uh, and the the pattern that it has is it usually patients are going to start with with an aura, so they're going to be able to tell when they're about to get the headache, then they get the headache, and then as the headache goes away, they they have this other sensation. The signs, and the symptoms, and the signs. So. Patients will complain about on their history, like a unilateral, meaning one-sided throbbing headache. They might have some nausea and vomiting. It might get worse with loud sounds. It might get worse with bright lights, as well as other things. Now, on your physical exam, the neurologic exam is usually normal. Sometimes it's not, but usually it's normal. We usually don't need any diagnostic tests, and uh, there's a bunch of medications that could be used to treat it. So you could see this is a good way to store information that you're learning in your M1 and M2 year about diseases because this is how you're going to be using it during your clinical years too. And so that's what we want to do, you know, store that information in the illness scripts that we're going to use. It's a great way to organize what's important as well as uh, you know, the compartments that we're going to use to look at it. Now, we do store illness scripts in our brain and this is how the novice will do it. There'll be an illness script for migraines, for meningitis and intracranial bleeding. But uh, a patient is going to come in not asking questions about migraines. They're going to say, can you fix my headache? And so now you need to go and find all these unconnected illness scripts in your head. And so the way the expert can, uh, will store this is through a network of illness scripts. So they're all kind of connected, and they're connected with the concept here of a headache. So headache, you know, if someone complains of a headache, the illness script, you know, you, you look for headache in your brain and it's going to point to a headache, uh, illness script for migraines, an illness script for meningitis, and an illness script for intracranial bleeding. So you can pull up those illness scripts together through this network. And so the way that we create this network is by binding these illness scripts together in a table of illness scripts. So you can see here, this table has headache, 
at the top. So this is the headache table. And we have three illness scripts that we're going to put in this in this table, migraines, meningitis, and intracranial bleeding. And so now when you are going and reading about various diagnoses that could cause headache, it's good to store it in these sorts of illness script tables because it allows you to compare and contrast various diseases, as you'll soon see. Uh, what we want to do then is to find out what is different about the three diseases. So here we have the three, meningitis, migraine, and intracerebral bleeding. And each circle represents the illness script uh, for each of the diseases. And the overlaps represent what's in common. So there's a couple of places we need to look here. So this part in the middle is common to all three of these diagnoses, and it's a non-differentiating feature. So if someone com comes in with vomiting, um, it's common to all three. It's not going to help you differentiate from all of these. A differentiating feature, on the other hand, is common to only two, but not the third one. Okay, the, the reason why we bring this up is because uh, we'll, we'll talk in a second about key features, and key features are pretty rare. These are more common, this differentiating feature that is common to just two, but not all three of them. A key feature is only, only relevant, to, it's specific to this one disease. So it's rare that you find something like that, but when you do, it's very helpful because if your patient has a headache and they have that one disease, you start thinking, well, maybe it's meningitis. And the final thing we should look at are rejecting features. Rejecting features that are, are features that if they are present, then the person does not have that disease. So in this case, let's say normal spinal fluid, you know, this patient does not have meningitis. So let's take a look at an example of this, okay? So here we have an illness table of headache, and I put our three diseases at the top, migraine, meningitis, and intracranial bleeding. And you can see again down here the different uh, elements of the illness script as well as you know, all the, the, the bits and pieces we filled in from our reading and our learning about these diseases. But we now not only have the illness script organized this way, but we can compare and contrast across diseases too. So let's look first at the non-differentiating feature, right? So the signs and, and symptoms we got in here, we have vomiting in each one of these. So if someone presents with vomiting and a headache, it's not really gonna help us differentiate between any of these three things. On the other hand, confusion can be present in two of these, maybe intracranial bleeding and meningitis, but maybe not in migraines. And so it does help you differentiate a little bit, right? It's The headache is going to be one of these, maybe less likely this one here, migraines. Um, and finally, we talk about the key features. And so the key feature here for our meningitis one is fever. Okay, that is not... Seriously? We're going to have to edit that out. Okay. <clears throat> and so the key feature here is fever. So it's present only in this one, but not in these two illness scripts. And it's rare to find something that's only present in one. All right. And finally, we're going to talk about rejecting features. And so we're going to say that for this one, uh, for meningitis, you have to have abnormal spinal fluid. So if you have normal spinal fluid, it rejects it rejects this diagnosis, okay, for meningitis. Again, so this one is usually also rare, uh, but it's good to know when these things are here, the rejecting features. And so, again, we, we talked about these illness script tables, right, and it allows you to do a couple of things. If you just, if you store all your information in illness scripts, that's great because that's the way that we, that we use the information. But if you just learn the illness scripts in isolation, then you have a bunch of disconnected illness scripts in your brain that don't really help you when someone comes in complaining of a headache. But if they do complain of a headache and you create uh, an illness script table uh, and then you're able to compare and contrast across several diseases, you're able to see what's different and what's the same between each one of them. You can find the key features and the rejecting features as well. You can connect these illness scripts in your head and you can connect them to a complaint. So this is our headache illness script table and it's connected to these illness scripts. So for your assignment, uh, for this clinical reasoning uh, assignment, what I, what I want you to do for this week's case is to create an illness script table and pick three diagnoses that can explain the complaint that the case has and then fill in the table with pathophysiology, epidemiology, time course, signs and symptoms, diagnostics and treatment. All right, fill it in the best you can and then look for things that are common 
across all of them and things that are different. Remember, we're going to look for our key features, our rejecting features, our differentiating features, and our non-differentiating features. The non-differentiating features really are not helpful. We'll note them because we're, we're going to write them in the table, but the real important things are the key features, the rejecting features, and the differentiating features. So construct this illness script uh, using the stuff that you learn about the diseases uh, relevant to the case this week. Okay, thank you very much, and thanks for watching.